is here to tell us a little bit about his first novel, What You See in the Dark. It is a uh, somewhat of a look behind the scenes at the filming of an American movie classic, sort of uh, through the eyes of you, the viewer. And Manuel, thank you so much for uh, coming in. Tell me a little bit about where the idea for this came, came from, the idea of setting a, fi uh, a book sort of behind the scenes in in the town where where a famous film was being made. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me to come to the show. Oh, I really okay. appreciate it. Um, I'm from California's Central Valley, and the novel is set in Bakersfield, California, which, uh, for those who don't know that geography, it's the southernmost city right before you cross the mountains into L.A. And I write a lot about the people who live there, and usually they're looking for a way to get out. And this is my third book. The first couple of books were short story collections. And when I was thinking about what I wanted to do this novel, I thought, well, what if I inverse it, you know, just sort of invert, uh, think of how the outside world could come into the valley. And that's how I came across Hollywood. And um, uh, Hollywood has come to, to that location and, uh, you know, on a number of occasions, perhaps though the most celebrated being when Alfred Hitchcock rolled to town with Psycho. Yeah. And it wasn't like he was filming, you know, all of the, just a couple of, you know, a couple days of, of location shooting before they went back to the studio. Yet that brief moment was was really significant for the town. Yeah, I mean, it's the rear projection shots. Anybody who knows old movies, when someone's driving a car and they'll see that sort of shaky background of the road, they were shooting that on the old 99, the old Highway 99. When I found that out in my research of, you know, of, of looking at this film, I thought if they've done just that much, that's enough for me. To, to merge the two worlds. Um, and, and the bigger piece, actually, is when I took a Hitchcock class when I was in college, and there is a moment in the, in the film where Janet Lee drives past a sign for Gorman, California, which is a little mountain town that is crossing into the valley. So we know where she's going. She's definitely going into, into the Central Valley. And yet, at the same time, while you, you make you know, the references to the actress and the director, you never you, you you never call them out by name. Why? Um, I think a lot of it is just um, wanting to be you know, a little reverential to to the idea of of who these people are. Um, there was something strange I thought about saying Janet walks down the street. Something about the the actress um, resonated a lot more to me as her identity. That's who she is. And the same thing with, with Hitchcock. Um, the other characters, of course, have names and they're all invented, but I felt I really wanted to um, to preserve sort of the idea we have of, we, of what we think is behind their celebrity. And uh, what, you know, what were you trying to say about celebrity, comparing it to, you know, some of the, some of the locals in this, you know, small dusty California town? Well, you know, the merging of these two worlds, it's, it's Janet Lee and, and Hitchcock coming and scouting locations, and people get wind of it. Um, and, but really, what's playing out in that small town um, feels in a certain way like a movie to them, because they're all sort of very desperate to create something meaningful out of the story of their own lives, which I think is what we all do when we go to movies and want to see ourselves on the screen. Um, you know, so in, 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 in putting the two worlds together, that's what I was aiming for. Um, it's not, the novel isn't necessarily a reenactment of Psycho, nor is it really even a concern with, you know, the very famous murder. But it's really more about why we tell these kinds of stories to ourselves. You know, movies in general are somewhat voyeuristic. We sit in a, a theater and we watch uh, what's going on with other people's lives fr from the outside. You took that theme throughout the rest of the book as well, uh, you know, both in, in the, the tense yeah. you, you use and, and the way you describe uh, the action that's going on. You want the reader to have 
more of a, a voyeuristic uh, view of, of what's happening to all of these characters. Yeah, and you know, I mean, people tend to think as, of small towns as places where nothing ever happens, but actually a lot goes on. As somebody who grew up in a small town, I certainly know that. But a lot of it... There's almost more gossip going on uh, but, in, a, in a small town. And you hit the word. It's, it's usually gossip, it's rumor, it's innuendo. You don't quite know the story, and you don't want to intrude on anyone's life. Life. So you start making things up, and that's where gossip and rumor comes from. Uh, our, this willingness to talk to each other about um, something that may be going on, but we don't have the courage to sort of really put ourselves out there as a person who's interested in really knowing all the details. Um, and that's, that's where I think um, you know, the, the, the novel says something about our tendency to want to watch stories like this. You know, yeah. and uh, speaking of this, this story, there's, there's so much tension here that, you know, bet between, uh, between the characters, you know, on the screen, off the screen, uh, and it just keeps building and building because there is, there is some, uh, some violence that, it, that yeah. occurs in the town off the screen, uh, as well as, of course, the, the pivotal shower scene yeah. that uh, everyone, everyone is familiar with. Uh, some of the reviews I've read, you know, just point out that tension as being, you know, similar to what you would see in a, in a horror film. Yeah, I, I'm, my my only fear is that it might give people the impression that it's this, you know, pot boiler, you know, uh, film big noir mystery. Stuff. And, you know, it has the elements of it, but it's really more concerned with um, the real push that we we edge toward when when we think about what happens with violence. Um, um, the uncertainty that it creates. We suddenly want answers, and movies will sometimes give us those answers to satisfy you know, our urge for story, but in real life, that's not the case. And um, you know, we, have to, we have to learn how to deal with events that um, can't be solved, and which is what I'm much more interested in. And I think books tend to be much, much more interested in than movies do. Now, uh, you mentioned that this is your, your third book. The first two were collections of, of short stories. Was it more difficult than you imagined to make <laughs> that transition from you know, a 10, maybe, maybe 20, even 30-page even story into a full-fledged novel? Yes. I mean, this, this novel took me five years and five drafts, and I'm just sort of a perfectionist by nature anyway um, as a short story writer. So it really took me um, a while to figure out how I wanted to, um, to arrange this. Um, I, I, I wish that I could go back to short stories, but you know, uh, publishers. Once that train has it's left. It's true. Uh, I mean, publishers and, and reviewers uh, tend to get much, much more excited about novels. There's, there's, there's more to grab onto, um, as opposed to short story collections. Well, once you've written your uh, 30th or 40th novel, then you can go back to <laughs> short stories. Uh, yeah. You know, in uh, you know, in the Atlantic or, or the New Yorker, and you can have fun with that. Yeah. Manuel, you're going to be uh, doing an event, uh, reading and signing this evening. Yes. Uh, uh, the King's English uh, in uh, Salt Lake City. Okay. Yes. Well, uh, that will be at 7 o'clock, and uh, you know, uh, I think people will relish the opportunity to uh, pick up this book and, uh, and hopefully get a chance to, to chat with you some more. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. I appreciate it. The book is What You See in the Dark. You can pick it up at your local bookstore or online as well. Definitely go run down to the King's English tonight at 7 o'clock to meet this fine young author. We've got a whole lot more still to come. Don't go away.